What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Cleveland Pulse YouTube channel. I am your host, Justin Harold, and with me, as always, my co-host, Jeff Santa. Today is a hangover Monday. Uh, it is the 11th of October, and we are coming at you after a Browns loss to the Chargers, making the Browns a 3-2 and two and a 42-47 to 47 loss uh, in what might be a potential game of the year candidate. Uh, a lot of offense being played, obviously, and not so much defense. So, Jeff, obviously haven't had a hangover Monday since the week one matchup against the Chiefs, but here we are. Uh, you changed your prediction Friday um, to a win or when we last recorded our preview for this game. However, in your longstanding, uh, you know, season predictions, this was a loss and that's what it turned out to be. Yeah, these games are getting annoying. We have four losses in the franchise history when we score 40 points or more three of them have happened since 2018 i don't really i i saw the stat i i don't remember the 2018 game i think we might have played the jets honestly and gave up 40 but last year the baltimore game i think this one was worse than the baltimore game honestly which i don't know how it could be but i don't know man just can't get the job done in the fourth quarter all the way around the ball Super frustrating. Yeah, uh, very much frustrating, especially when you're, you know, ahead as much as we were um, in that, you know, you have almost a perfect for first half again. Uh, you you hold them to 13 points. You have about 20 points, and then you come out and you score immediately on that first drive in the third quarter. Um, but then putting up 26 points in the fourth quarter is, you know, absurd. We still – we still put up 15, but at the end of the day, like you said, it's tough to lose these type of games. And again, one, I just don't think, I think last year you and I had the same thoughts about uh, some of those, you know, the Raiders game, I believe it was where I think we're the better team, but we just so happened to lose that game because of um, things that transpired. Obviously, you know, we can talk about the offense being as good as it's been all year. I think probably the best game they've had all around um and Joku having a huge day obviously Donovan Peoples-Jones finally getting into a rhythm um Higgins doing Higgins things uh and Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt obviously uh, we already knew the storyline coming in that the Chargers had one of the worst run, run defenses there was Nick Chubb 21 for 161 and a touchdown uh Kareem 12 carries for 61 yards and two touchdowns and Baker Mayfield 23 of 32 for 305 and two touchdowns zero interceptions but like we said, I don't know that we can really talk about the offense in a negative light. Obviously, the only things to note and uh, some sort of bad feeling is just our both our offense tackles. Uh, obviously, Jedrick was out this game already, but uh, Conklin went out and never came back in. So uh, playing two backup offensive tackles at, you know, probably the most important offensive line position. Yeah, putting together the piecemeal offensive line, of course, they did a good job, I think, um, all things considered. I think the Chargers were the healthier team headed into this game and then throughout the game. I think that that remained to be the case with some of our guys leaving the, the contest. For the silver lining, I think that, as we alluded to in the preview, this was a game, you know, even – Maybe even last year, definitely two and three years ago, where we go out on the West Coast and probably get destroyed. So I think that that's your silver lining. But that's it, honestly. There's no moral victories. I think that if you're a logical and reasonable fan, there's no, oh, we played, you know, good for the Browns. I, I'm, I'm done with that. I've been done with that since the playoff win. Um, I've been done with that since last year. And it's disappointing because our two losses against the AFC – like it's nice beat. It's nice beating up on, you know, the average to below average teams in the other conference, but it's just so annoying. Cause if we're in some stupid ass playoff race, our AFC record is going to be bad. It is what it is though. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And you're absolutely right. I mean, at the end of the day, we moved to three and two, they moved to four and one and uh, our two losses come against AFC teams that will for sure be competing, you know, if the Chargers aren't the, you know, lead dog in their division, obviously we're going to have to compete with a Kansas City Chiefs team that, you know, you can't count just like the the Steelers, like we'll talk about later this week. Uh, you can't really count them out until the season's over. And so um, a lot of three and two teams as we stand right now in the AFC um, and, you know, the Browns aren't 
you know, it's a marathon. I've been, I've been preaching this for a bit now. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Um, this is a tough game to lose. I think Jeff was completely right in saying that, you know, in his uh, preseason, yes, preseason predictions that, you know, this is a game that we were going to lose. I, I'm okay with this loss in terms of when it happened. Um, however, we are going up against the only undefeated team next week. Um, the only good side to that story is just it's at home. They've got to make the trip uh, from Arizona to Cleveland. And at the end of the day, that's just got to be a game that you perfect, you protect home field. But sticking with this game, we got to talk about the defense because obviously you can't be a top five, top 10 defense and allow 47 points, especially when your team is not turning the ball over. I don't think Jamie Gillen, obviously Jamie Gillen, you know, did not do us well when we had to punt, but also at the end of the day, uh, blown coverages that allowed for 72 and 42 or 47 yard touchdowns are just unacceptable. Our safeties have been very bad and something that we obviously thought would change with the addition of John Johnson, the third and Ronnie Harrison being healthy and Brant Delpit being healthy. Um, you know, we just seen blown coverages that, you know, even one of those changes the game. Um, and there's a lot of other things to talk about, but Jeff, what, what do you want to point out on the defensive side of the ball right now? Third down and fourth down, the biggest issue outside of the big bombs, obviously our safe John Johnson's been terrible. I didn't think it was, I think he's probably playing on par as Andrew Sandeo was the first five weeks of the year last year, which is terrible. Absolutely terrible to be saying, especially for how much we, I mean, I understand he took a pay cut, but um, if he was disguised in that Rams defense last year, and I, I know it's early and he's, he's having a hard time probably with, you know, the playbook and our safeties didn't leave a good foundation last year. So it's difficult, but we just can't get off the field on third down. And it's a bad precedent to set early in the year because that was the biggest talking point from last year is that we could not get off the field, even against the lowest of the lows. Chad Henney was doing it to us, but now it's almost like Brandon Staley knows Cliff Kingsbury next week is going to know, like we can't get off the field. You might, why, why would you kick a field goal? You know, why would you kick a 56 yard field goal when it's, when you could just go for it and probably get it. Um, I think it's, you know, it's, it's hats off. It's tip your cap to Staley. Uh, his trust with Justin Herbert is unmatched. I don't think any head coach trusts their quarterback more in the league. And this guy's a second year, you know, player, no, no preseason last year, had the COVID season last year, new head coach, new offensive coordinator. So unbelievable over there. We knew this defense was going to regress. Yeah. So we knew we we're going to have bumps in the road. You know, like you said, it's a long season. Yeah. And bumps in the road, ups and downs, more like it. I think the, you know, the thing to note, Jadavion Clowney uh, not playing. Late that scratch. Hurts a lot. Yeah, late scratch. That hurts a lot. Obviously, the four-man pressure that we had been sending for the past couple of weeks that was getting home uh, did not do that as well this week. And I think, again, you got to talk about just sometimes it's weird because sometimes, you know, I'm not going to harp on it too much, but Joe Woods, I, I just thought there should have been more times where there were blitzes and there should have been just a slight bit more pressure being thrown in terms of who you're throwing at them offensively. They had a guard go down early. Um, Miles, Miles was getting absolutely, you know, I think destroyed in terms of what was going on in between the lines, but, you know, him having to play about 80% of the snaps and then Tack McKinley not even playing uh, the same amount as our D tackles is concerning. Uh, we just don't have, great backups in terms of that defensive line um and injuries i mean denzel ward goes out uh in that first half aj green who is a you know undrafted rookie free agent from last year i think he played i think he played really well um yep. he's one of those guys that i really like i think besides potentially you know I, I don't know the exact argument for that big the first big mike williams touchdown um, it looks like man coverage. Obviously, he gets beat a little bit, but I think a safety is supposed to help him there. But outside of that, I think A.J. Green played phenomenal. And I think that one play on fourth down that got called for DPI, uh, that's going to be one that we, as Browns fans, are going to argue probably for the next day or two before we move on. I think that's 
it's either both ways because Mike Williams clearly holding on to him and everything, pushing off and all that. But, you know, it's either you call it both ways and it gates or you don't call it at all. I think that's probably one of the one DPIs that I'd go crazy about. And then, uh, you know, Greedy Williams gets hurt at the towards the end of the game. He had been playing very, very well. Um, Joke had to go to the hospital after the game. Uh, just a lot of, you know, injuries that happened to us during this game. And the one storyline I think I saw someone tweet about, a uh, Browns reporter tweet about is, you know, you can't fight off injuries and you can't fight off penalties together. Uh, it's either one or the other. And unfortunately, you know, we had seven penalties for 77 yards to their six for 49. The first and tens turning into first and twenties and questionable play calling throughout those series are they're disheartening. That's for sure. I mean, outside of the penalties, we won in every st- statistic possible besides passing yards. And that's again, a 72 yard wide open bomb and another 42 yard wide open bomb that puts them behind us in total yards for every category. So really just a, a defensive game where, listen, if this team is going to be, you know, one week talked about as a top five, top 10 defense, 47 points is just unacceptable. Yeah, um, I don't know. It's um, it's the DPI. The NFL blows my mind because they put these rules that are so specific. And this is all I'll say about the DPI, but it's like, unless it's a defensive thing, I always thought that if the defender was holding on to the jersey, they were always going to call it. And I think that was something that a lot of people could agree with. I guess maybe it doesn't go both ways or the angle is just bad, but The front angle, Mike Williams, I believe, is just clearly holding on to A.J. Green's jersey. Same way with some of the head-to-head stuff. They say, oh, if it's head-to-head, it's always getting called. Not really. Only when it's only when it looks bad sometimes. But the defense, giving up the big plays, definitely hurt. Like we talked about, our safeties, not very good. I think that I think that if the if we could agree that the refs were bad, but there were some plays earlier in the game. I I don't know if it was the first or second quarter. We had, they had a third and eight that they, it was incomplete and Troy Hill got a holding call that was away from the play that led to a first down. That was very bad. And that led to a touchdown, I believe. And, you know, just some mental mistakes here or there where you're like, okay, that might not end up being big, but at the end of the day, as as a huge part of the game, you got OBJ's drop which that probably could have led to more points. Just a couple of things here where you have to, you got to clean it up to get the job done in the national football league against, you know, the elite, the top tier teams. I think that, like we said, like we talked about, we will talk about in our preview. Kevin Stefanski has not lost back-to-back games, regular season games as Brown's head coach. That's going to be big, but we need to get healthy off the field and we need to just tighten up the special teams, some of the smaller areas of the game. Yeah, we'll definitely um, try to keep you guys updated with a lot of these injuries that we've had. Obviously, um, a lot of things to talk about going into that preview. But, yeah, uh, man, that I, I don't really know what else to talk about outside of, you know, uh, you as a as a team, P, penalties are going to kill you, especially mm-hmm. when you control the time of possession as well as we did, and you win the turnover battle. And a lot of that stuff is just – yep. It's frustrating to see. And again, 531 total yards offensively. You really can't. The only thing that you could you could talk about offensively that's upsetting is probably the Kevin Stefanski play call right before they go up um, a score on us at the end of the game. And then the, you know, the final drive of, you know, Baker just kind of taking a couple of short um, in the middle of the field plays instead of you know going outside but again that could all be coverage stuff and uh, you know at the end of the day that you can argue that that final play that final throw there should be a pi um the incidental contact is kind of a bullshit rule because you could quote unquote trip like the chargers defender did and you know end up tripping two of our players and not get it called i think a lot of people also, I saw a couple of people go like, why didn't Higgins die for that ball? I think he thought that Njoku was there or DPJ was there. And he looks at the ground, sees them, sees Njoku laying on the ground and then looks up. And by the time he's like looking up, the ball's hitting the ground. And I, it's hard, obviously. Um, you wish that 
Baker and the offense could pull that one out at the end there. Um, but things are sitting on our way. It's three and two for us. Uh, a marathon, not a sprint. But like Jeff alluded to earlier, the AFC games hurt. Losing those games hurt a lot. And you're going to have to play a couple of these AFC teams in the stretch after Arizona. You got uh, Denver Thursday night. Mm-hmm. And then I believe you got Bengals at Bengals and then Steelers, I believe, at home. Um, and then we're going to have the at uh, we're going to have the Ravens at the Ravens before the bye week. So a lot of games left to be played, of course, not going to act like the sky is falling down on top of us, but certainly as a team that you expect to be in the playoffs from now on, uh, you have to, you know, have to hold this team to a higher standard. And I think 42 to 47 um, defensively, you gotta, you gotta harp on the mistakes that were made and offensively you gotta harp on Kevin Stefanski and some questionable play calls on uh, crucial drives and execution in terms of Baker Mayfield, OBJ dropping the ball on uh, fourth, uh, fourth down and a couple of execution errors in that last drive. So it is what it is. Uh, Jeff, I don't know if you got anything else to say before we uh, call this one quits. I like being tested early. I think it's pretty apparent that, you know, with a way easier schedule last year, we had five losses. So you're pretty, you are, you got two losses five weeks in this year. You're facing the only undefeated team left in the league this week at first energy, thankfully. And you're just, you're just going to have to, I just don't like the precedent being set that, okay, we could beat the bad teams and then somehow we just crumble when it comes to teams who are great to elite. We got to just get the job done against teams that even if, even if they're on just as par with us or even have a better roster in some cases, you know, that's what prepares you for the postseason. That's what's going to get the job done when it's, you know, one and done. So long way to go. I like your, you know, staying with the marathon theme um, one week, you know, even being like one and three, you know, some teams that are one and three or some teams that are even two and three, there's still, you know, Pittsburgh, there's an, ad, there's an added State. game. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Long way to go. Yeah. Two teams that certainly their franchises aren't pinning the, well, maybe the Steelers, I don't know, but you know, Juju Smith goes out for those season, but uh, you know, those two, I can guarantee inside the organization, yep. those two teams are not uh, hitting the panic button just yet. There's a lot of games to be played and, uh, you know, it's time to bounce back. That O and Oak mentality has got to continue throughout this week. Um, go one and zero at the end of the week. So, with that all being said, guys, thank you so much for all your help uh, with the subscribing, the comments, the likes, the comments. We're all very appreciative of it. You guys have been fantastic. Uh, keep it up. Again, if you hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit the bell as well. Leave a like. Leave a comment. What are your guys' thoughts on this game? You know offensively what are your thoughts defensively what are your thoughts you want to well let bit of your rage let loose uh (laughs) with the with the refs and everything that's acceptable as well um but with that being said thank you very much and we'll catch you in the next one peace